This episode of Musical Hell is brought to you by Midnight Musicals. Welcome to the podcast Musical Underground. And by Cafe Himbo Cookbooks, celebrating his 10th anniversary. Thank you. On the surface, black comedy is pretty easy to define. It's finding humor in things that, generally speaking, are not funny. Death, illness, violent crime, social injustice, etc. But as anyone who has tried to go goth can tell you, there are many shades of black. Even if the subject matter is the same, it doesn't mean the humor about it will be. To illustrate, let's have a look at the 1960 movie The Little Shop of Horrors, directed by Roger Corman. If you don't happen to be familiar with Corman's reputation as a director, let's say thrifty is the most charitable way of putting it. His cost-cutting measures are the stuff of Hollywood legend, and Little Shop is a case in point. The sets, music, and even the broad plot strokes are all recycled from Corman's previous movie, A Bucket of Blood. In fact, the two were often confused for one another in the pre-home video days. Little Shop was also filmed on an astonishingly swift two-and-a-half-day schedule, although sources differ on the reason why. Some claim Corman made a bet he could make a feature film in under two days, but others claim he was maximizing use of the bucket of blood sets before they could be torn down, or he was racing against a deadline which would have forced him to pay royalties to his actors. So here's how it originally went down. Gravis Mushnik owns a down-and-out flower shop in L.A. Skid Row, with his only employees being the sweet, malapropism-prone Audrey and shy, clumsy Seymour. After too many mishaps put his job in jeopardy, Seymour presents Mushnik with an unusual plant he's been cultivating, named Audrey Jr. after his crush, hoping it will generate enough interest and business to save his job. But Audrey Jr. doesn't respond well to the usual gardening techniques, and it isn't until he pricks his finger that Seymour discovers the plant's true craving, human blood. Audrey Jr. and Mushnik's business flourish, but Seymour's own donations are unable to keep up with the plant's appetite, which it has begun expressing in human speech. While out walking trying to think of a solution, Seymour inadvertently causes a man to stumble into the path of an oncoming train. Unable to dispose of the body elsewhere, he reluctantly gives it to Audrey Jr., unaware that Mushnik witnesses the act. This repeats a couple times, with Seymour haplessly killing a sadistic dentist and a prostitute and disposing of the bodies in between awkward flirting with Audrey, while Mushnik tries to curtail the problem without spoiling his newfound success and tricking the occasional burglar into falling into Audrey Jr.'s flytrap. Eventually, the time comes for the now-enormous plant to bloom, and, in front of a crowd of admirers, its flowers open, revealing the faces of its victims. The police and Mushnik try to chase Seymour down, but he eludes them and returns to the shop, where he curses Audrey Jr. for ruining his life. Arming himself with a knife, he jumps into the plant's maw to destroy it from the inside. Seymour's pursuers arrive in time to find Audrey Jr. wilting with Seymour's face in its final flower, protesting, I didn't mean to, before withering. The comedic styles represent the biggest differences between Little Shop the movie and Little Shop the musical. Corman's film is very farcical, with the hapless Seymour stumbling into trouble and exacerbating it with his own clumsy attempts to solve the problem. It also draws heavily on the Borscht Belt style of humor, with stock Yiddish characters like the pessimistically sarcastic Mushnik and Seymour's nagging hypochondriac mother. The musical takes a more satirical bent, skewering both mid-century B-movie tropes and the follies of ambition. Seymour here is a more willing participant in his own fate, first seduced and then horrified by his Faustian arrangement with Audrey II. The wacky regulars at the flower shop are cut, allowing for Audrey to become a more fully developed character and upgrading the dentist to her abusive boyfriend. The endings are also significantly different, but that represents a different matter. Corman's Little Shop was filmed during the time of the Hayes Code, rigorous content regulations, and the reason most movies prior to the mid-60s don't have any sex, swearing, or interracial relationships. One of the firm tenets of the code was that if someone did crimes, they had to be punished for it, either through the usual legal channels or through divine retribution. Seymour's murders are the result of accident, bad luck, and eventually overt mind control, but by the Hayes Code, they still prevent him from walking away with the girl. Taking out Audrey Jr. in an act of mutual destruction is probably the best fate he could hope for under the circumstances. 
The musical had no such limitations and ends in a manner reminiscent of The Twilight Zone's speculative cautionary tales. The tragically flawed protagonist is undone by a disaster of his own making, while the concluding narration warns the audience to learn from his example. And then, of course, the movie of the musical came out and audiences just went, to hell with that, give us a happy ending! Proving that H.L. Mencken was right about underestimating the public being a solid investment. Ah!